Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie Weiss, and I am here to help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. Too bad it's a cesspool. And today I want to talk about why there is so much hostility concerning middle-aged dating. I mean, sometimes it seems like men and women, we just don't like each other now that we're older and we're trying to connect. And after I dated for a while and I felt a lot of this hostility, like, well, you better not expect an old fashioned relationship or God dating so expensive. I, I started to wonder why. And I think it comes down to the way that people of my generation were raised. Now I'm the tail end of the baby boomers. And, you know, I still remember first grade for me was the very last year that little girls still had to wear dresses to school. And I remember playing on the monkey bars, you know, you're upside down, you're swinging, and those darn dresses are falling over our heads. So we have to hold them down. Or we're playing tag and the boys are trying to reach up under those silly little dresses. And of course, you know, they're flopping around because it's not a good thing to wear when you're running. Um, so I, I feel like that image pretty much says it all, right? The boys are on the monkey bars in their pants being pretty comfy and us girls are on the monkey bars trying to stay upside down and uh, be modest by holding our dresses down. Now, I went to law school in the mid 80s and by then um, it was the era of yuppies and Wall Street and Gorgon Gecko and Greed is Good and James Bond. And there was very much a conquest mentality. I, I used to watch LA Law religiously every week, you know, ooing and eyeing over the homes and the cars. And of course, never really thinking whether uh, what these folks were doing was made a worthwhile life at a deeper level. But that was kind of the time. It was a very acquisitive time. Um, and people had sort of a conquest mentality. You know, let's get in there. Let's conquer. Let's be partners at this law firm. But not so much for us women lawyers. My law school class was 51% women, and it felt great. But once I got to my law firm where I was, let's see, I think there were seven women for 35 men, no women partners, uh, most of us were talked over. I know I was talked over. Uh, people, the men didn't really ask my opinion. I was spoken over at meetings. I was young. Nobody made an effort for me to speak up. This was before lean in. Um, people weren't, didn't look at conversational styles or sexism in the workplace. And, you know, I remember specifically uh, having some very hard deadlines and having my boss tell me that I really need to be more pleasant. Pleasant is not a word that describes a successful attorney, believe me. Plus, he was a human resources nightmare, and nobody seemed particularly concerned of whether or not he was pleasant. So I was really taught, you know, do not offend. And I think a lot of us women were given that message. We're taught to foster harmony, to be conciliatory. We want to get along. Uh, if you talk women in a group, group, we usually put ourselves down uh, sometimes to find connection. You know, at worst, if, oh, my thighs are more jiggly. Oh, I haven't really accomplished anything. Whereas I think men were raised more to promote their accomplishments, to speak up for themselves. So when you get one group where people are sort of trying to have power, and the other group where we're supposed to be conciliatory and empathetic, you have kind of a mess. And I'll add a second element. You know, I grew up with pretty mainstream media. It was probably the era of the supermodels. And women were taught to be desirable. We had to be wanted. So not only were we supposed to somehow be successful but unobjectionable, but also desired by the media. My opinion, this created a perfect shitstorm. We have to want to be wanted. We have to want compliments, and we also can't offend our complimenters. So we have to want these compliments, but then also feel uncomfortable telling uh, the men bestowing these compliments to bug off because maybe they make us uncomfortable or they're not appropriate or they're not professional. And I feel like some of this, these problems, these differences came to head when a girlfriend called me recently. She was in tears. Now, she was a millennial, so it was a little different. But she talked about meeting this guy, very successful. He told her he was crazy about her. She was stunning, according to him, and she is. 
And it was the first time in a very long time he'd been excited about somebody and she was spending a lot of time at his lovely home. Until after a few weeks in when he said that, you know, with his fragile emotional state, he really couldn't see her as much as he had been. And he would still see her, but only when it was allowed and he could, he could tolerate it, that his emotions could, could deal with it. Apparently he was a very, very fragile fellow, which I think he should have confessed far earlier, say before the peeling back of sheets and the invitation into bed, right? Hey, just need you to know, I'm pretty damn unreliable. But that didn't happen. He conquered her basically. You know, he made her promises that he couldn't keep. I learned a word recently from some millennials on now, and here it is, fuck boy. Sounds ugly and it is. It's a, it refers generally, generally to a young man, but let's just say emotionally immature man who maybe acts more excited or involved with a woman than he is um, in an effort to be with her, but where he doesn't really feel the emotion that he's offering. And that's unpleasant and it's wrong. I mean, here, words are just words and we believe them because we want to, right? Some guy says, well, I don't have much to offer, but um, I kind of want to get laid when I don't have other stuff to do. Can I text you? Okay, not very exciting. But what happens when you get some guy who's like, you're fabulous. You're a combination of fresh strawberries and wood smoke. And I, I want this to work. And for the first time in ever so long, I feel we could build a life together. Guess what? Both schmucks are saying the same thing. One just has a silver tongue. But if you believe him, it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. There is a simple solution to all this hostility, which does transcend the differences in how we were raised and the way the media, at least of my time, ascribed proper behavior for women. And that one word answer is compassion. We need to start looking at each other as people, as friends, as individuals who have their own souls, their own dreams, their own foibles. Not as conquests, not as notches on a belt, not as successes, not as, hey, I can land this person who's ultimately successful, but as people we really like. And when we start to care about people, we see them as individuals and not transactions. Because you know, you don't disappear on your friends, right? You don't ghost your friends and you don't try to talk them into bed and then hope they'll banish when you're gone. That's another great thing about online dating. It's, it's so based on a screen. I think that we forget people still exist when they're not on that screen, but they're still there with their feelings, wondering what the hell happened to you. And I also think that when we treat people with compassion, it's better for our own self-respect. I know the times I haven't liked myself when I'm online dating haven't necessarily been because I didn't find men I liked. It's because I wasn't treating people well. I was canceling things last minute. I was looking at things more transactionally. But when we treat people with kindness and with respect, we preserve our own sense of self. And the accountability we need is for ourselves, not necessarily even for them, although if that's a good side effect but it's to keep our own self-respect that we're decent people who see other folks as individuals. So I think it's important when we look at hostility to see the way that we're raised. For me as a woman, how I was raised to be so empathetic and conciliatory, to see how men were raised in some ways to be dominating and to look past that and just see us all as friends. And I really hope that in, in this hostile age of middle age dating, I hope it starts a compassion that is a chain reaction. I'm Debbie. I hope this helped navigate the cesspool that is middle age dating. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.